Dear students, greetings for the day. Today we will discuss about responsibilities of HR manager. These systems operate throughout an employee's membership of the company, starting from the system of entry, recruitment and selection, through the management of employment relationships, rewards, appraisal development, industrial relations, grievances and discipline, finishing with the these systems termination of the relationship, retirement, resignation, redundancy and dismissal. HR Life Cycle Role of HRD Manager in an Organization Specialist Generalist, Policy and Procedure Writer A Good Communicator, Current Focus Current and Future Focus Speaks HRS speaks the language of business, management hierarchy focused customer focused, good customer relations skills, few financial, marketing skills understanding, finance, marketing aspects of business, stays within the box thinks outside the box, focused on the internal organization focused on the internal organization and the broader society. Factual communicator mentor, a nationalist and global worker. The role of the HR professional is changing. In the past, HR managers were often viewed as the systematizing, policing arm of executive management. Their role was more closely aligned with personnel and administration functions that were viewed by the organization as paperwork. When you consider that the initial HR function, in many companies, comes out of the administration or finance department because hiring employees, paying employees, and dealing with benefits were the organization's first HR needs, this is not surprising. In this role, the HR professional served executive agenda as well, but was frequently viewed as a roadblock by much of the rest of the organization. While some need for this role occasionally remains you wouldn't want every manager putting his own spin on a sexual harassment policy, as an example much of the HR role is transforming itself. The role of the HR manager must parallel the needs of his or her changing organization. Successful organizations are becoming more adaptable, resilient, quick to change direction, and customer-centered. Within this environment, the HR professional, who is considered necessary by line managers, is a strategic partner, an employee sponsor or advocate and a change mentor. At the same time, especially the HR generalist, still has responsibility for employee benefits administration, often payroll, and employee paperwork, especially in the absence of an HR assistant. Depending on the size of the organization, the HR manager has responsibility for all of the functions that deal with the needs and activities of the organization's people including these areas of responsibility. Recruiting, Hiring, Training, Organization Development, Communication, Performance Management, Coaching, Policy Recommendation, Salary and Benefits, Team Building, Employee Relations, Leadership. Primary Objectives of the Human Resources Recruiter, Develop and Execute Recruiting Plans. Network through industry contacts, association memberships, trade groups and employees. Coordinate and implement college recruiting initiatives administrative duties and record keeping develop and execute recruiting plans work with hiring managers on recruiting planning meetings create job descriptions lead the creation of a recruiting and interviewing plan for each open position efficiently and effectively fill open positions 
conduct regular follow-up with managers to determine the effectiveness of recruiting plans and implementation. Develop a pool of qualified candidates in advance of need. Research and recommend new sources for active and passive candidate recruiting. Build networks to find qualified passive candidates. Post openings in newspaper advertisements, with professional organizations, and in other position-appropriate venues. Utilize the Internet for recruitment. Post positions to appropriate Internet sources. Improve the company website recruiting page to assist in recruiting. Research new ways of using the Internet for recruitment. Use social and professional networking sites to identify and source candidates. HR role, business and strategic partner in today's organizations to guarantee their viability and ability to contribute. HRD managers need to think of themselves as strategic partners. In this role, the HRD person contributes to the development of and the accomplishment of the organization-wide business plan and objectives. HR role, business and strategic partner in today's organizations to guarantee their viability and ability to contribute. HRD managers need to think of themselves as strategic partners. In this role, the HRD person contributes to the development of and the accomplishment of the organization-wide business plan and objectives. The HR business objectives are established to support the attainment of the overall strategic business plan and objectives. The tactical HR representative is deeply knowledgeable about the design of work systems in which people succeed and contribute. This strategic partnership impacts HR services such as the design of work positions, hiring, reward, recognition and strategic pay, performance development and appraisal systems, career and succession planning, and employee development. To be successful business partners, the HR staff members have to think like business people, know finance and accounting and be accountable and responsible for cost reductions and the measurement of all HR programs and processes. It's not enough to ask for a seat at the executive table. HR people will have to prove they have the business savvy necessary to sit there. As an employee sponsor or advocate, the HR manager plays an integral role in organizational success via his knowledge about and advocacy of people. This advocacy includes expertise in how to create a work environment in which people will choose to be motivated, contributing, and happy. Fostering effective methods of goal setting, communication and empowerment through responsibility, builds employee ownership of the organization. The HR professional helps establish the organizational culture and climate in which people have the competency, concern and commitment to serve customers well. In this role, the HR manager provides employee development opportunities, employee assistance programs, gain sharing and profit sharing strategies, organization development interventions, due process approaches to problem solving and regularly schedule communication opportunities. The constant evaluation of the effectiveness of the organization results in the need for the HR professional to frequently champion change. Both knowledge about and the ability to execute successful change strategies make the HR professional exceptionally valued. Knowing how to link change to the strategic needs of the organization will minimize employee dissatisfaction and resistance to change. The HR professional contributes to the organization by constantly assessing the effectiveness of the HR function. He also sponsors change in other departments and in work practices. To promote the overall success of his organization, he champions the identification of the organizational mission, vision, values, goals and action plans. 
Finally, he helps determine key measures that will tell his organization how well it is succeeding in all of this. Coaching is providing feedback, usually to executives and managers, about how to reach their personal best in their organizational leadership role. In her capacity as coach, the human resources professional will do everything from active listening through providing test results that highlight a manager's strengths and weaknesses while a business coach usually works with high potential managers. The HR coach may work with every manager and supervisor at every level in the organization. This is what makes the human resources coaching role so challenging. The traditional human resources coaching role focused on helping managers address issues and opportunities organizationally. Additionally, talented HR professionals have always provided feedback to managers about the impact of their personal and behavioral style on others. Most frequently, the HR coach is asking an organizational leader to reflect on how she, he handled a particular situation. The HR coach asks hard questions and provides advice about actions that may have been more effective than the course the manager shows. People have different reactions to feedback, and even the most carefully chosen words can create an unexpected negative reaction. Thus, the HR coach practices a blend of politically deft observations with frankness that will help the manager develop in her capacity to lead people and personally excel. Training and development managers and specialists conduct and supervise training and development programs for employees. Increasingly, management recognizes that training offers a way of developing skills, enhancing productivity and quality of work, and building loyalty to the firm. Training is widely accepted as a method of improving employee morale, but this is only one of the reasons for its growing importance. Other factors include the complexity of the work environment, the rapid pace of organizational and technological change, and the growing number of jobs in fields that constantly generate new knowledge. In addition, advances in learning theory have provided insights into how adults learn, and how training can be organized most effectively for the employee. Training specialists plan, organize, and direct a wide range of training activities. Trainless conduct orientation sessions and arrange on-the-job training for new employees. They help rank and file workers maintain and improve their job skills, and possibly prepare for jobs requiring greater skill. They help supervisors improve their interpersonal skills in order to deal effectively with employees. They may set up individualized training plans to strengthen an employee's existing skills or teach new ones. Training specialists in some companies set up leadership or executive development programs among employees in lower level positions. These programs are designed to develop potential and current executives to replace those retiring. Trainers also lead programs to assist employees with transitions due to mergers and acquisitions, as well as technological changes. In government-supported training programs, training specialists function as case managers. They first assess the training needs of clients, then guide them through the most appropriate training method. After training, clients either may be referred to employer relations representatives or receive job placement assistance. Planning and program development is an important part of the training specialist's job. In order to identify and assess training needs within the firm, trainers may confer with managers and supervisors or conduct surveys. They also periodically evaluate training effectiveness. Depending on the size, goals, and nature of the organization, trainers may differ considerably in their responsibilities and in the methods they use. 
training methods include on-the-job training, schools in which shop conditions are duplicated for trainees prior to putting them on the shop floor, apprenticeship training, classroom training, and electronic learning, which may involve interactive internet-based training, multimedia programs, distance learning, satellite training, videos and other computer-aided instructional technologies, simulators, conferences, and workshops. Compensation managers conduct programs for employers and may specialize in specific areas such as position classifications or pay studies. Establishing and maintaining a firm's pay system is the principal job of the compensation manager. Assisted by staff specialists, compensation managers devise ways to ensure fair and equitable pay rates. They may conduct surveys to see how their rates compare with others and to see that the firm's pay scale complies with changing laws and regulations. In addition, compensation managers often oversee their firm's performance evaluation system, and they may design reward systems such as pay for performance plans. Employee benefits managers and specialists handle the company's employee benefits program, notably its health insurance and pension plans. Expertise in designing and administering benefits programs continues to gain importance as employer-provided benefits account for a growing proportion of overall compensation costs, and as benefit plans increase in number and complexity. For example, pension benefits might include savings and thrift, profit sharing, and stock ownership plans. Health benefits may include long-term catastrophic illness insurance and dental insurance. Familiarity with health benefits is a top priority, as more firms struggle to cope with the rising cost of health care for employees and retirees. In addition to health insurance and pension coverage, some firms offer employees life and accidental death and dismemberment insurance, disability insurance, and relatively new benefits designed to meet the needs of a changing workforce, such as parental leave, child and elder care, long-term nursing home care insurance, employee assistance and wellness programs, and flexible benefits plans. Benefits managers must keep abreast of changing federal and state regulations and legislation that may affect employee benefits. Other emerging specialists include international human resources managers, who handle human resources issues related to a company's foreign operations. The international human resources manager may work worldwide in company operations, may help place staff returning from overseas assignments, may prepare staff members to work in various international operations, and may translate cultural and international customs for North American staff. A second or multiple languages are a plus in the international human resources manager's role.